I'm back today with the Vintage Off-Road Wrecker and today I have a couple projects that I want to get done and the first one is to find out how much this truck weighs. Why is that important? Well in my last video with this truck I pulled a very heavy big Ford F-250 out of a ditch. This truck didn't even move so it's important to have enough weight that you're not going to slide backwards because your vehicle does not weigh enough to get the traction that you need. However, you also want the truck light enough that it's still good off-road. And it's also important to know how much the truck weighs for transporting it. So if I have it on my rollback or on my trailers, how much does it weigh? And that's what we're going to do first today. I have these race car scales from Intercomp, so let's get one of these under each tire. Now I have a scale on every corner and I put these little ramps to get up onto the scales. Obviously this truck can drive onto these scales no problem but I am leaving a little gap so it's not touching the ramps so that's not going to affect the readings. I just don't want to damage the scales by driving onto them so I'm using these little ramps. Let's make sure that these all turn on and get them all zeroed. Okay it looks like it's picking them all up. We're all zeroed. Let's get the truck on. Make sure the wheels are not touching any of the ramps. Take a look at the results. So it looks like I'm actually exceeding the capacity for these scales. I think the truck probably weighs about 6,000 pounds, but I'm overloading the scales on the rear, so it might actually weigh more than that. But you can see we have on our left front tire 1,485 pounds, on our right front tire 1,436 pounds. Let's go to total, see if it will give it. Okay, 6,093 pounds, so it will give us a total weight overall. We just cannot measure the individual corners. So now we know this is 6,100 pounds sitting here, and this is with a full tank of fuel, and with all of my straps and chains, fire extinguishers, everything that I normally carry. The next thing I want to do is make a mount for this emergency light. This is a battery powered USB charging beacon light. If you remember when I got this truck, there were two beacons on it already mounted up here, and these were hardwired to the truck. This one, however, mounts magnetically, but this top is fiberglass, so it's not going to stick to it. I also have a couple holes left here from the previous beacon. So what I was thinking is making a steel plate that covers up those holes and also is a good place to magnetically mount this. And the reason I'm using this magnetic one is because here in the Midwest, all the trees and things would just end up destroying anything that's sitting here on the roof. So I thought this was a good compromise where I can just slap this up here when I need it and it won't be sitting on the truck when I'm actually on the trails. Until, of course, I get stuck and I need it and I can slap it up on there and people can find me. So I've got a new sheet of steel here and this is the old beacon that sat in that position. I think what I'm going to do is trace the bottom of this so I have a circle and then I'll mark where the holes were. And after everything is marked, then I'll get it all cut out. Now I'm marking the bolt holes. I'm going to use the shear to just cut, rough cut out the piece that I need.
And here's my rough cut shape. Now we'll use this hand shear to cut out the curve. Definitely not perfect, but this is good enough. Now I'll just quickly clean up the edges. Now we just need a few holes drilled. made the holes slightly bigger than they needed to be that way I shouldn't have any fitment problems now let's powder coat it I think I'm gonna go with a yellow powder coat that way it blends in the best with the truck I was also thinking of doing orange that way it's always orange in that spot no matter what but I think I'll go with yellow Now that the part has the powder on it, it needs to go into the oven. And it'll be in the oven for the next 20 minutes. Let's take a look now. Let's wait for this to cool down, then we can put it on the truck. Okay, let's look how good we did. Looks like they probably line up. But before I put this down, the previous person just put some RTV around here to seal the holes. But I'm going to use some of this 3M strip caulk. So I'll just put it down surrounding the holes. Now when I set that on there, that will seal those holes up. Then I took a little bit more of it and put it around the holes so that when I put the bolts in, it will squish out and everything will be nice and sealed so no water will be getting inside here. Got it nice and mounted now. Let's try it out. This beacon does have a bunch of different modes. This is the mode that I like. It just continually circles. Let's check it out. If I wanted people to know that I was there, I think that is going to work pretty good. You can easily see it from the rear of the truck as well. If I was out at night and people needed to find me because I needed help or I was stuck myself, you would be able to see that light from a long ways away. And that's going to be it for today. I have a bunch of parts here already to do another video on this vehicle. So if you want to see more videos on this vintage off-road wrecker, make sure that you subscribe and then you'll know when they come out.